call. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. Later, there will be an opportunity for questions and comments. Instructions will be given at that time. As a reminder, this conference call is being recorded. I would now like to turn the call over to our host, Ellen Haley. Ellen, please go ahead. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. It is my great pleasure to have many prestigious boxing people on the phone with us today. First and foremost, we have Sergei Petr Kovalev, the new WGO, WBA, and IBF light heavyweight world champion. We also have his promoter, Kathy Duva, CEO of Main Tent. We have Extremis, Sergei's manager, and we also have Don David Jackson, Sergei's trainer with us. So all of those people are here and available for questions. I'm going to let Kathy say some greetings. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for getting on. Uh, this has been a very auspicious month for Sergei Kovala. He became a father. He became a triple world champion. And then he got to meet his son. Um, I am so happy for him, so pleased, and so proud of him and Agus and John. Um, we're calling them the dream team now. Uh, they put together, uh, they did everything I ever asked. They put together everything I needed. They, 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 John came up with this genius plan. Sergey followed it to the T. It is uh, reminding me of, of the way things used to be for main events a long, long time ago, and it felt good. So I want to thank them, and I want to thank all of you for joining us. And um, I'm going to throw the question, I guess we'll throw it open to questions. So, uh, you get your chance now to ask for your hands, we'll feel. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. This will place your question in the order it was received. Once again, if you would like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. And we'll pause for just a moment while questions are coming in. Our first question is from Mike Woods with Sweet Science. Mike? Hi. Hi, guys. Thanks for taking the time to do the call. Congratulations to all. Tremendous, tremendous win and a throwback win for main events. And I'm happy for you as a company. This question is for Sergey first. Sergey, if you remember at the workout, I asked you if you're going to be looking forward to changing diapers of your son. Uh, I'm wondering how many diapers have you changed, and uh, have you enjoyed the experience as much as beating Bernard Hopkins? Serega, I was asking you when you were in the Glen Saint Jimmy, and you asked me if you were going to change the diapers of your son, and you were at home, I was asking you how many diapers you have changed, and you were happy to change the diapers as well as <laughs> uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for everything. Uh, yes, I already already changed the uh, diapers and uh, already lost the counting how many diapers. <laughs> I already lost the count. How many? Uh, maybe maybe fifteen, maybe uh, around fifteen. Uh, it's easy. It's easy because I have experience with my uh, nephew, uh, with my nephew, my oldest uh, sister has two babies, and uh, we grew up in uh, one apartment together. You know, like, uh, and uh, uh, I, I spend the time, a lot of spend the time uh, with uh, yeah. how, how was the baby sister, you know, like, and uh, it's. Uh, uh, not uh, difficult for me, is it? And uh, how does it how does it compare? How does it compare to beating Hopkins? Hopkins is a little bit more fun than the, than the diapers. This <laughs> uh, Hopkins is uh, a little bit uh, a little bit dangerous than uh, changing diapers. <laughs> right. <laughs> changing the diapers, great and more, quick. More, da keep. more dangerous, you know. Like, <laughs> If uh, here when, when you when you change the diapers, he can uh, maximum uh, my son can be beat on me, you know, like on my head. <laughs> but, <laughs> and he can pee on my head. I love it. <laughs> he can pee. He can pee on my head. That's 
No, no, Han, Han, Han. Han, oh, Han. Oh, Han. <laughs> yeah, when I change it, Han. I get my hand. Take our next 
for uh, this is for Sergey. Sergey, um, Adonis Stevenson team that's up to you last year. I'm just curious if you even think he's worthy of a shot at the undisputed title, or if you hold a grudge and wouldn't wouldn't give him that shot. Uh, Adonis Stevenson, как бы, ну, отказал от тебя, убежал от тебя. Думаешь, что ты можешь ему дать шанс похирует? Uh, I don't know how I can uh, answer for this question, but I'm ready for a- everyone. If uh, this is the uh, right fight, and uh, it's interesting fight for everybody, you know, for basketball, why not? I'm ready for everyone, but this is the job of my promoter uh, and my manager. I just uh, now uh, don't, think, don't think about the uh, next fight. I just uh, right now have a rest uh, with my family, a couple of weeks, and I'm going to fly to Russia for a couple of weeks, you know, and visit my parents. We'll go ahead and take our next question, and this is from Jake Donovan with Fox News King. Okay, um, Sergey, I just have one question for you. Um, how comfortable are you making 175? Actually, it's a two-part question. How comfortable are you making 175? And is there any fight, either at super middleweight or cruiserweight, that would want that would prompt you to move up or down in weight? У меня только два вопроса к тебе. Как спокойно ты делаешь 175 паунда и думаешь, что ты когда-нибудь боксировать как cruiserweight или или super middleweight? Um, I'm making my way to for five five years ago. I made uh, my way much easier, but right now a little bit harder. But uh, I came to make 125, and when I make 125, my body is uh, my body is uh, like uh, dry and uh, get more faster, more attention, you know, it's more uh, reflect. It's uh, good for me for boxing. I can I, I can show the how how good I am. But uh, for super middleweight, no, I think so. It's not possible because already already more than I, I needed to my body, you know, to lose the weight. And uh, weight uh, cruiser weight, about cruiser weight, it's a very big weight for me. Uh, because I'm walking like 190, you know, 190 is uh, uh, cruiser weight 200, you know, like uh, I, I'll be fighting against uh, fighters who much bigger than me, and if uh, four rounds, five rounds, it's okay, but if uh, it will be 12 rounds, it for me will be much harder, you know, like, because uh, they, they can push me, and uh, and I have right now decision that I still uh, light heavyweight because I didn't sleep, I didn't clean up total uh, this division. I have I have uh, one goal to get the double title. Title. Okay, thank you very much, Sergey. Um, Kathy, I have one question for you. Has there been have, for you? Has there been any other discussion for a fight other than at light heavyweight for Sergey? No, not in the other way. No, of course. Okay, I, there's a lot of fighters that yeah, there's a lot of fighters that claim they want to fight people, but you know whether or not they actually get in touch with the right people to make those fights happen is another story. So I just want to clarify. Nobody's talked to us about any fight at any other weight, no. That's what I've heard. Thank you very much, Kathy. Okay.
dealing with him. Look, all, all I see are stories that say, yeah, we're going to fight him in 2015. Okay, you know what? If they want to fight 38, they know how to reach me. Um, I, no, nobody, nobody calls me. Nobody talks about it. Uh, you see a lot of stuff in the press, and again, I think the latest story, I'm not sure it might have been yours, but, you know, well, yeah, we're interested in that fight in 2015, so it's still 2014, and uh, nobody's been making any uh, overtures towards uh, having any interest in fighting Sorge at this point. Uh, you know, I'm Steven Besides, he's got mandatory to take care of, and I assume that's what he's working on. I'm not going to worry about that now. You just, or Sorge, yep. would you want to address that? Well, we, we're not interested in Steven. We're interested in WPC Titan. And then the time comes, then he can fight with it, no matter who is going to be holding that WPC title. That's what we're going to be aiming for. Now, right now, it's too early to predict. If somebody was told me, beginning of this year, you guys are going to be facing Hopkins, and uh, Sergey going to be fighting for two more titles, I would probably ask this person what he's smoking. Because I would never, ever could be predict something like that. But the thing's happening. Things changing every day. We're going to the direction where Sergey that is want to be, and we're going to the direction to be him undisputed champion of the world in the light heavyweight division. And that's what we're going to be aiming. Who is going to be holding title? I, we can't predict it right now. Serega, do you want to say something about this question about your question? Yes, it's just a question. So Serega says, the eggs are already told. Uh, exactly the same thing what he was going to say. Okay. Um, you know, he, he had an unbelievable, he's had an unbelievable year. Um, he's had, you know, an unbelievable dominating fight did to Hopkins, what no one else did. Um, and it's almost more impressive that he didn't knock him out, that he sustained it because he proved he could go the distance. Having said that, given that kind of performance, people really want to see him fight a big fight, um, I think. Um, is it your feeling that you need to just display him against one of these other 175 pounders, or should he go out, or should you pursue, say, a Golovkin um, in some form, whether Golovkin moves up or what? Well, then we then choose Golovkin, you know, and you're talking about the one guy is the 160 and another is 175. So let's, let's, you know, let's talk about the rumors and let's talk about the crazy stuff. Why we should go for the Golovkin? Let's, let's aim... Mayweather is the more money, or let's say many factors, the more money there. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. I, I can't see. I cannot see. This is two different weight parts. Absolutely right. It is not, it's, it's, uh, I don't see that fight happening in any point. I really do not. Because it's a way different part. You know, so. That's my opinion. I don't know, Kathy, you want to add something? Well, I... I look at it a little differently. I just never, I've learned, I've been doing this a long time. I've learned to never say never, but it's certainly not going to happen now. It's the kind of fight that if it did happen, it would be years from now when Golovkin has moved up and felt comfortable at the weight. But that is so far off that it's not really worth talking about. We want to, um, as Bridget made it clear, she wants to, to own the division. She wants all the titles. She wants to keep the title that he has. That means he has to do mandatory. And yes, we want big fights. Of course we do. Uh, but it takes two people to make a big fight. So if, uh, if others are not inclined to have a big fight, then Sergey's, uh, he has mandatory obligations. He's going to have to take care of them. Um, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> but looking, looking in the, looking in the, in the, in the big picture, like, you know, looking for something, uh, you know, in a year going, the big fight, of course we're looking for the big fight. And much closer would be the big fight, like, the fight with the guy. Then we're talking about the possibilities on the pay-per-view fight. Uh, Chavez Jr. having a problem doing 178. Maybe he will move to 175. Uh, Andre Ward doesn't look he has a problem making a weight, but he might want to be considering to move in a 175. He's a pretty big guy. So those fights are much more make sense than we start 
talking about uh, Gennady Golov. And another one I can throw in here is Paul Frotch, who might decide to move up. Um, not now, but again, uh, he's, he's looking for big fights as well, and, you know, there's a pay-per-view market over there in England, and that's another possibility that is uh, exactly. in the distance. In the distance. You never know. Well, unless he retires first, but you never know. Okay, you, you in part answered my third question, but I'm going to... Um, I was going to piggyback off that with, were you pleasantly surprised that the numbers uh, that the fight drew because it, you know, trumped the numbers of Golovkin's fight, which were, were very high? I don't think it's about trumping anybody. We were just very pleased that the numbers were high. We had a very late hour, a very late start, which was uh, unfortunate, but caused by football. Uh, and taking that into consideration, the fight did great. I think... You know, it's not really about winning a contest over who does the most numbers. It's about uh, giving the fans a lot to watch. I'm told also there were a lot more viewers uh, for, the, for the, the second showing on the West Coast that don't get counted into that. So uh, that was nice to get to. And uh, all good. Thank you. As a reminder, please press star 1 if you would like to ask a question. Our next question comes from Chris Guns with Chris Guns Boxing. Chris? You ever... Thank you, everybody, and congratulations to Kathy and Sergey and John David, especially you, Sergey, on not only the win, but the birth of your son. I'll start out with John David. This is John, and, and how does Trainer of the Year sound to you? I can get it, you know. Uh, it's something that I'd like to get, you know. Uh, if, I, if I don't get it, I, 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 can, I can live without it. But to get it, it's another part of my cat that... Um, you know, I love boxing. Boxing is my life. It's been my life since I was seven years old. And for me to be a chief and something like that would definitely just, you know, take me to another level. And it would show the fans that, I, you know, I'm worthy of it. The fighter that, 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 that allowed me to, you know, get on this uh, this level made me worthy of it. So, you know, it, it, it's something I, I, would, I would truly enjoy. And I, I you know, thank Angus for, for, you know, allowing me to train uh, Sergey. And I thank Sergey for... You know, uh, believing in me and believing in my system and, and, and you know, doing what it does best and, and thank Kathy for her, her you know, her, um, giving, giving her blessings and, and believing in me as a trainer to, to uh, you know, um, also train with other fighters. So for me, it would be, it would be just something that's beautiful. Man. I, I never, I never done something. I always believe that I'm deserving of it to a degree. To get it would be just phenomenal. Absolutely. And, and it would be good to see a, a new face in there. Usually the same old ones, but let me ask you this, John David. There was a lot of insults towards you at the last press conference before the fight, and I'm not sure if you want to tell us. Maybe it's a private issue, but what were the reasons why you stopped working with Bernard and, and Nazim Richardson? Was it a was it a good breakup, or was it was it a well, you know it was um you know. Actually, it, it, it was. I never really worked with Nazim. When, when I was brought in to work with Bernard, I was I was the lead guy. I devised the strategies, and I you know I made things work. But the thing that, that, that didn't go well with me for fight night, they would allow Nazim to be the guy doing all the talk. Um, so you know, um, it, it, um, where it really came to came to came to an end was was twofold. When I'm watching, I kept telling these guys twenty years ago about circus. I don't fight this kid. You know, he's gonna hurt you. And number two was. After the, the second Roy Jones Bernard fight, Bernard looked bad. To me, he looked bad. It was, it was a terrible fight. And he called me and said, John, what do I, what should I do? He said, Tell me what to do and I'll do it. I said, retire. He said, I can't do that. I said, what can yeah, before? So that was the last time we had together. That was the last time we had together. And that was pretty much it. So how, how surprising was it that, that he did come at you like that? If at all? I mean, you mean to ask me about, about my opinion for to retire? No, the, the, or at the press conference. At the press conference. Oh, well, you know, listen. He, he, first of all, he couldn't get Sergey's head. So he figured he got in my head. I guess maybe he even messed up my plan with Sergey. So our, our plan was formulated a long time ago. And you couldn't get in my head. You're not, he, he wasn't fighting me. He was fighting Sergey. So at the, end of, at, at the end of the day, I wasn't worried about the move all and done. I'm going down the steps. And it's killing the ring. Yeah, you shouldn't worry about me. You should worry about him. See, that's not even all the, 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 the stuff that I did in the pre-fight conversation was getting to his head. He knew I knew him than anybody. So I knew that I was getting inside his head prior to the fight. And you said the uh, game plan was formed a long time ago, and it's just 
like a week before the fight, Sergei said that he had no game plan. He was just going to go in and, and make it a fight. So you did have a game plan. And, and what was the game plan specifically for the Well, again, listen, you want to fight, Chris, I know you, you mean the way, the way he broke Barnard down and dissected him. That was the game plan. You know, when he dropped him in the first round, that was, that was nice. But after that, guess what? You only hit Barnard with, with, with the second solid shot for a few more rounds. So he did what he did with Sergei Bissette. He, he started just dissecting him, breaking, bringing him down, going to the body, going, you know, going to the shoulders, him in the chest, and the, you know, his, his best dad was phenomenal. So he just did what, what he had to do and break down, break Bernard down systematically. And if I could interject just for a moment, you know, back in the glory days of main event, George Patton was training everybody. You know, John had some, some experience with him, and that's where he learned a lot. And boy. What I saw Saturday night, I saw him choreograph the fight. That's what I used to see. He was, because Sergey was in control. John choreographed it, and Sergey did the plan. And I got to tell you, um, there aren't many trainers on earth who can who can make a fight plan like that and, and, and bring that out in the fighter. And I see that don't focus on John this time around. Something's very well with all yeah, Same goes for Agus. Uh, Man of the year should be a foregone conclusion. Uh, I don't even know. I have to even tell you why. Um, he is he is behind all of these great fighters that are coming up, and look at the job he's doing. And uh, finally, fighter of the year, third day. I, I you know I, I think he not just because he beat Bernard on the way he beat him. I just think that that was beautiful and magnificent, and I hope you all agree. Thank you. And our next question comes from Louis Cicino with Blackstar Media. Yes. Uh Good afternoon, Sergey and Cassie Duva, Aegis Clemens, and John David Jackson. This is the Stenio Lois Jr. Black Star News, Manhattan. Uh, Sergey, uh, yeah. question here in form of a statement. Bernard Hopkins said he wasn't going to retire, and we surprised everybody. But the fact is that then there was a mention of Donald Stevenson. Now, uh, you're going to fight in March. Are you going to risk, if, that, if at all possible, uh, but not fighting a Donna Stevenson when you can become the first light heavyweight in boxing history to own all the titles? I, I, would, I would not like to see uh, Hopkins get Stevenson first. I want you to get him first. I know he's run away from you, but can, uh, March, 5th, March 2015 is, is your fight date. Can that be an inducement to get him in there? And John David Jackson, congratulations. You put up a battle plan like a military camp, and he came through with your soldier, uh, Kovalev. And congratulations on that. But, Sergey, can you answer that question for me? Ты вам спрашиваешь, что как бы эм, сейчас, когда Бернард Хаппин говорит, что он все равно как бы будет буксировать, не волнует ли тебя такой вопрос, что Бернард Хаппин выиграет, сейчас пойдет выиграть Стивенсона, и опять титул будет, WBC титул опять будет титул у него. Не хотел ли ты сразу как бы, буксировать лучше Стивенсона и забрать этот титул, когда ты был, был бы один единственный лайк uh, heavyweight истории, которые забрал все четыре титула. Uh, yes, I would like to get the one more the title. Uh, 100%, 1000%, you know, but uh, I don't know what what what, uh, what will be in the future. Is uh, right now uh, the job of my promoter and manager, you know, it if will be happen
Cassie and all of Team Kovalev. Uh, I actually have a question for John, David Jackson, and Sergey. Uh, the first one to John, David Jackson. Uh, were you surprised with uh, Bernard's movement and his, or should I say, lack thereof? Or, and did he look like he regressed uh, that age really caught up to him against Sergey? No, I wasn't. I wasn't surprised. You, you hit around the head, you know. And with each passing round, the more Sergey put the pressure on him and went to the body, it began to slow Bernard down. You know, and, and, and it's, it's, just, it's just logical thinking. When you're an old man in a young man's sport, if a younger man applies the pressure makes you fight his pace at a pitch you're not used to, and you, you, you're, you're, uh, your clip is half loaded, you can't keep that stronger young man off of you. It only makes sense. The younger, the younger stronger guy keeps doing what he's doing best, it makes you fight at a pitch you don't want to fight at. You know, Shumanov, Marat, and Cloud, those guys are robotic. They fight at the Nars pace. It was a pace that he could set and he could do what he wanted to do. So Bernard, for whatever reason, decided that this that Sergey was like these guys. He didn't study Sergey, you know, quite quite enough because Sergey is, 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 is a superior boxer. He showed how, how truly talented he is this past Saturday. It's something I've been telling people from day one. He's a better boxer than he's ever been able to show because most of the fights and early. This fight here, he was able to show that he fought a guy who was supposed to be a master boxer, and he had boxing. Because you prevailed that night. And, and, and not only was it you, but he is a very, very good boxer and, and allowed him to work on it. You know, I'm not the kind of guy that, that, that presses Sergey to do things. I'll show him things, and he'll work on them on his own, and, and he perfected his way. And, you know, well, compared to when I first got him, he's a hell of a fighter now. He can always fight, but he's a hell of a boxer now. Boxer punches. And I think Bernard. Over or, or underestimated his ability, and that's what I've been along with. Is the, the younger, stronger fighter might prevail against the, the, the wiser, older fighter. Okay. And Sergey, were you surprised with uh, the ease that you were able to hit Bernard with the power shot? Серега, ты как бы был удивлен удары, которые ему наносил, он мог удержать. Yes, I was surprised. Uh, yes, I have. Uh, I had a lot of mistakes in this fight. Uh, 
did, did that knockdown punch, was he trying to knock him down with that punch, or did that just uh, happen randomly? Well, you know, he, 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 you know, you know, what? His time. You know, he, he, he timed the punch well, and he, came, and he was able to catch him out with the shot. You know, but um, that's, that's one that's one of the good things about Sergey. His timing is just phenomenal when when when, he, when he's punching. And if you watch the if you watch the fight, he timed it. And when I dropped that, dropped the left hand with the jab, and he came over the top with it, caught him with it. You know, it, you know, I asked Sergey Brown. The night is around after the minute. I said, I slow down. You know, are you looking for a knockout? No, John, I, I just want to keep boxing. I said, that's good. Keep doing what you're doing. You know, if a knockout comes, great. If it doesn't, you're going you're gonna, you're gonna to win this fight decisively. And, you know, Sergey, I think it's you know, time when he says, you know what, if I get a knockout, fine. If I don't, I'm going to keep beating the way I'm doing. You know, and, and, and the way the way he won was more satisfying than a knockout because he beat, he said about 12 0. I thought, you know, I, well, honestly, I thought, Bob, I went.
five worth all twelve pounds. Mm-hmm. Now, many people were wondering how you would respond after going eight rounds, because you never went past eight rounds until your Hopkins fight. Um, many people were thinking that maybe you would fall apart, but in contrast, you looked even stronger after the eight round. How did you feel when you went past eight? No, really didn't understand uh, what you were saying. I thought that you didn't go. But 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 I thought that you didn't go. I felt very really great after eight rounds, after uh, nine rounds, after ten rounds. I just uh, tired after full fight when it was uh, twelve rounds, you know, because I I did I did the last one and a half minutes of uh, round twelve. I gave uh, everything to to be something uh, more uh, effective, you know, for, for public, for, for TV, for me by itself. Because uh, I got uh, I punched him a couple times when he swam when he swam after, after my punch, and I tried I tried to knock him to 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 give him knockdown or knockout, but. He has a great and hard head, very hard head, but uh, it's because he's still on the on his leg, and up on his leg, you know, like he didn't drop on the floor. Yes, I was surprised. Thank you. And our next question is from Carl Freetag with Fight News. Carl? This is for John David Jackson. Uh, Bernard was pretty hard on you uh, in the lead up to the fight. I was just wondering if uh, uh, you had a chance to say anything to him after the fight. Yeah, you know, I walked into him and told him he should retire. I said, you know, you've had a great career. But why, why keep you, you know, uh, what you've accomplished by fighting again and losing to a fighter of left his talent than you I and mean, possibly getting stopped. And at that point, you know, he, 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 you know, he kind of in his own way apologized. You know, said that even the press conference, he said that he didn't be stable for promotion. He didn't mean that. You know, I, I knew it was just trying to get inside my head. I knew that. And he couldn't get inside my head because, like I said, he's not fighting me. He's fighting someone else. And I didn't even know I got inside his head. So when you're turning attention to me and I'm circuit, that means that you're trying to find some 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 weak link in the, in the armor to get to somebody. And if I'm a fighter, I'm, I don't care about the trainer. I'm worried about the fighter because the trainer can't fight for the fighter. But I knew I had him at that point, and I knew that I, I worked my magic on him and we got inside his So but he was very apologetic afterwards. And we're, you know, we're friends. This is a bit, I'm an honest friend, he's my friend. I have, you know, I come to, don't have the FL internet. This is my job. And I, and I warned you people, two and a half years ago, don't fight this kid, but you took it anyway, so whatever happened, happened. You know, you can't be mad at me, I told you. This, this, this is a hell of a fighter here. You didn't believe me, and, you know, the outcome, it, it proved that I was right. So and there's no there's no ill feeling. It, it, this this has been we're in the hurt business. And he signed up for this for the job and he's done it well, but you know, last for last Saturday he met his match. So, you know, we we're, 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 we're still friends, you know, we still speak. We, we, we probably won't hang out, but that's okay, you know, we're still friends. Okay, thanks very much and congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, at this time it is time to close the call.